What's cracking my photography friends? I'm TK North and in this one we're talking about five essential steps to not only starting but also growing a successful photography business. Over the years, I've been able to build up a pretty successful photography business working with some pretty big clients, clients I never would have dreamed of when I first picked up a camera. But what if you are starting totally from scratch? So these five critical steps are things that I would do if I was starting my photography business again today. Some of these steps, maybe I did well initially, others not so well, so you can learn from my mistakes. Plenty of valuable lessons that I will jam into this video. All right, so step number one, this might be pretty obvious, but perhaps the most important of all. Identifying your niche or the type of photography you want to get good at and start gaining skills in that area. So to start getting work as a photographer, you do need some level of skill. Now, arguably, the higher the level of skill, the more potential jobs you can take on. Now, you don't have to be the very best photographer, but you do need some level of skill. So this isn't something you either have or you haven't. This is something that you can and will obtain over time. I can happily admit when I first started photography, I was pretty rubbish, but I did really love it and that was enough to motivate me to get better and better and keep practicing. So whatever time you have available, put in that time, practice and practice. If you're struggling with this part, my tip is to always set yourself little challenges, keep it interesting and keep advancing your skills. An example here, if you're trying to get into fashion photography, you could just pick some clothes that you or a friend already owned, plan a shoot around that particular garment like you're shooting for that brand. You can do this for every type of different photography, plan different shoots, and they are really valuable to grow your skills and build a portfolio. Here it can be really worthwhile thinking about who your dream client might be. This is a common tip that I've heard before, but a really valuable one. This can help guide what you want to get good at and the skills that you need to pick up. And this leads me to step number two. As you're starting to develop your skills, it's time to make a business plan. Now this was actually pretty confronting for me starting out. I didn't know where to begin or where I could make money. I didn't really know anyone doing it full time and didn't have anyone I could really model or learn from. My advice here is don't think about the areas you can make money, just think about the type of photography or the type of work that you would be really happy doing. There is so many opportunities out there. Really make sure you're pursuing what makes you happy. Is it capturing special moments and memories for others like weddings or events? Is it maybe live music, maybe fashion photography, or even car photography? Whatever it may be, think about who your dream clients would be to work with. When I started, I didn't have a clear niche, but I knew I wanted to work on things like travel campaigns, car brands, even big brands like Adobe and Canon. So I had to create and share this type of work. I did car shoots unpaid and took on every opportunity that came my way within these type of fields. Obviously your dream client may shift and change over time, but if you can always have this in your mind, it will really help direct and plan your business. So your plan can be as simple or as detailed as you like, but at least try to include what your business is all about, what you stand for, the type of work that you want to attract, and also what type of services you're going to offer. If you are unsure, do some research, search for photographers within that niche, see what they are offering, what their branding looks like, everything. This can help direct your own plan and what services you can potentially offer. I know a lot of people when starting out will take on any type of photography work that comes their way. Now, if you are unsure about what niche you wanna go down, this can be useful because you're going to develop a really broad range of skills and trying out different things. Hopefully you do decide on a bit more of a niche soon enough. Now, this was true for me, I dabbled in many types of different photographies. And for me, that was quite useful to build my skills. But if you do have a clear direction or niche that you already want to follow, don't waste your time on taking jobs outside that and pursuing things that don't line up 
with your clear direction or niche that you have in mind. So step three, immerse yourself in that particular niche. So this is when the fun starts to begin. You really need to put yourself out there and start putting yourself outside your comfort zone. For me, the first few years, I would say 99% of jobs I did, I felt really outside my comfort zone. And even years after that, it probably took a little while for that percentage to go down. Here, if you have that plan in mind, this is where you need to think about those dream clients or the type of work you want to pursue and really knuckle down on that particular area. That means really build a network within that particular area, starting to take on work that will lead to those dream jobs and really just starting to hustle. A good example here is weddings where getting those first few bookings is probably the hardest part. Once you get the ball rolling and build up a network, more and more work will come your way. So let all your friends and family know that you're taking on weddings. If you know anyone getting married, offer to perhaps shoot it for them. Go to wedding expos and really immerse yourself in that industry. Once you get a few bookings, chat to everyone there, chat to the celebrant, the florist, makeup artist, other photographers, videographers, give them your details, follow them on Instagram, really immerse yourself because even these people will refer for future weddings as well. For me, the first wedding that I shot was my cousin's and I did it totally for free. Just remember that everyone does have their own particular budget and everyone needs to start somewhere. So don't be afraid to shoot some mock weddings or even couple photos of your friends dressed nicely. These are things I also did. As you do start booking a few weddings more referrals will come your way so you can apply this example to pretty much any type of photography you really just need to get yourself out there and be seen within that particular niche so step four is making opportunities for yourself building a portfolio any way possible so this step really ties into building a network and is all about building up a beautiful portfolio that you can share with future clients. Importantly here, it doesn't matter how you get that portfolio. So yes, this can sometimes mean initially taking on some unpaid work. To me, this is not only super beneficial, it's also totally necessary if you don't have much of a portfolio to show. For me, I took plenty of unpaid opportunities to begin with, but importantly, I was able to really gain new skills, but also build up a portfolio that I could start to share with future clients. Clients need to know that it's worthwhile to invest in you. So initially, even if you say, hey, I'll take a couple of photos for you, but this is going to be my rate moving forward, at least you're setting the ex expectation and they're not going to be expecting more unpaid work in the future. Think of this as an investment in future work rather than, oh no, I'm giving my precious time away for free. How you approach this, I do think really affects the overall quality of your work. So be grateful for any opportunity that comes your way. For me, this really did help to getting more paid opportunities in the future because of course I was then sharing this and then future clients were able to see what I was all about and what they would get from me if they were to take me on. They didn't need to know what I charged previously. They only needed to know what they would expect from me. They needed some kind of proof that I was worthwhile investing in. Bringing us to the next critical step, build your brand and share your portfolio. So now that you finally have proof of what you can offer and what you can provide to clients, you need to be able to share this somewhere so all those future potential clients can see it. So this is where having a well-presented website, social media and branding that all really shows exactly what you're about is super important. This is also where you want to start building a presence on social media. Importantly here, I do say presence rather than just a following. Now, if clients can see good consistent work, they're not going to care too much about your follow account. This only really matters if you're hoping to share more kind of paid partnerships on your own social media pages. So building an audience on different platforms over time can be beneficial, but don't focus on that initially. Just focus on providing social proof of what you can offer. Keeping that dream client in mind, if they were to go to your Instagram or website, you wanna show them that you're providing really consistent, beautiful photos within that particular niche. 
if you have plenty of beautiful examples somewhere for them to see, this is pretty much everything. Remember, this is why those first few jobs are so important just to get the ball rolling and why I'm a big believer in getting those first few jobs any way possible, anything that it takes, even if that means unpaid, just to start building up a portfolio that you can then share with the world. Lastly, just as a little bonus tip, be an absolute legend to work with and just be really professional. If you can be really nice to your clients, always be on time, reply to emails promptly and just be a good person, this can really help you stand out from others and regardless of your industry, I think this is really important, not just in photography. So really overextend yourself especially when you're starting out. All right, thank you so much for watching. Remember to subscribe if you did find this video useful. Let's all get out there and start attracting those dream clients of ours. Keep on creating and keep on growing, my friends. I will catch you in the next one. Bye for now.